So here we have our four different types of bone grafting material. This is our allograft particulate, which is a cortical cancellous mixture. Our granules are pretty fine in this one, as well as our ACE brand, which is also a cortical cancellous. Now, the granules are a little bit larger between the two. So depending on the procedure that's being done, the doctor will ask for preference. Then we move on to the cancellous, which is your bovine bone, as you can see. Particles are a little bit larger. We also have our Nobel BioCare Creos bone grafting material. It's a mineralized cortical. Grains are a little bit uh, different textured. Also, depending on the procedure that's being performed, here we have a resorbable membrane that comes in a smaller of a paper format. This one we will need to utilize sterile scissors prior to the procedure to cut it to size. Then we move on to our surgery plaster, which is this can be used either as an individual placement over the bone grafting material or as a mixture in with the bone grafting material. Both ways work as well. Also, doctor preference, this hardens in with the bone grafting material so it doesn't allow it to disperse versus tented with the membrane. This one is utilized while doing extractions, socket preservations, doctor preference once again. Quick introduction to our instrumentation, uh, double-headed mirror, our probe, our Pritchard retractor, Pritchard curette, our Kirkland, our Orban knife, our curette, back action chisel, two Gracies, Sugarman file utilized for crown lengthening or anything interproximal, and our Orban knife. Our boozer elevator, tissue forceps, do not get these confused with cotton pliers. Castro viejos, not to be used for any blade placement. Castro viejo, utilized with a small size needle, usually a 4-0, 5-0, 6-0, and a 7-0. These are very delicate, always to be left open while sterilization process. Rangeurs, Minnesota for retraction. Suture scissors, blade handle, second blade handle, syringe, burr block, hand piece, cavitron tip. Always make sure while opening a cavitron tip, you do not open by tearing the back portion on the cavitron. You always want to open up from the point end and you want to peel open as you go. Reason why is damaging this portion of the cavitron tip will not allow it to function correctly. Proper way of transporting your tray. Now what we're going to do is we're going to adapt our handpiece to the unit. Always make sure before applying the handpiece to the unit you place your first burr that your doctor will be using. Starting off with a number four round burr. This is a latch it's engaged there's no movement to the now we can adapt our handpiece to the unit before placing the handpiece back into the unit we want to make sure that our rheostat is accessible water is on run your water 25 seconds we have good water flow that you can place back Water adjustment to your handpiece is located at the bottom of the unit, right behind the handpiece that's being utilized. No water. Adjust your water to doctor preference, depending on procedure. So minimum to a high. Here we have our dense ply cavitron unit. Always want to make sure that everything is connected prior to inserting your cavitron tip into the unit. Proper way to plug this in. Bring around your latch. Insert and release. Make sure your pedal is on the doctor's side. So slide over. Bring your cart over. Prior to inserting your Cavitron unit or your Cavitron tip, bring your water to chamber level. If this is not done properly, this will burn your Cavitron tip and not allow it to function correctly. Now we take our Cavitron tip. It's okay to get a little bit of water outside of the chamber. This allows you to properly have usage. Once your tip, your Cavitron tip is placed in, you want to test the unit. Make sure you have proper water flow. Adjust to doctor preference or 
treatment preference from a low to a high. Power wise, utilize your yellow adjuster. High frequency, low frequency. Prior to handing this to the doctor or bringing your patient in for treatment, make sure your handle is wrapped. As you can see, properly wrapped around the handle, slightly over the neck, onto your cavitron tip. A proper way to transfer to assistant side. And always make sure that your sutures are opened up slightly. Not open completely, you want to open up just a bit to add water prior to suturing. This allows you to fill your pocket with water and allow it to soak. PGA does not need to be soaked. Always make sure suctions are ready to go. You have your saliva ejector, your high back suction, and your green suction. This will vary depending on procedures that are being performed. Some doctors would like for you to use your green surgical suction versus your white surgical suction. White surgical suctions are used for complicated cases where we don't want to injure the sinus membrane or suction up any tissue. We'll go with the green surgical suction. Make sure your sleeve is placed back on and just pull right through. Keep it at the neck to where you can easily function on and off. Always leave a little room up top when you're turning on and turning off so it doesn't allow the sleeve to come down onto the connector. You can place back and you're ready to go. This is our implant motor setup. You want to take your pole, insert it like so, your power cord, insert, and drop. Water line for your handpiece. One piece. Open your bag. So here we have our sodium chloride. You don't want to use any dextrose due to the sugar. It causes rust in your bits. We don't want rust. You remove the port. And you can go ahead and remove the cap from your injector. Slide this clear in. Before rotating back over, you want to make sure your line is closed. Now it's locked in so it will not leak. Go ahead and hang your bag. Go take this around. Work your way through. This allows for your water line not to drag on the ground. And towards the front, a red dot indicator. You match the red dot indicator with your red dot on the unit. Slides right in. There's also a little sleeve in case the red dot is not there. You have a notch. If the notch does not match, it will not slide in. Don't force it in. Just bring that notch forward. Slides right in. Now we take our dock, our handpiece. Place the handpiece down. After your handpiece is put together, we'll take our sleeves. There's two different sleeves. There's a rolling surgical sleeve, or you can also utilize a air and water syringe cover. Run it through. Slide down as you want to protect the motor. Take your second sleeve. Same thing, run it through. Make sure your water is exposed. And you only bring it down about halfway down your handpiece head unit. We have our second sleeve that slides down about halfway down. We can connect our sleeves by utilizing a wrap. Now we move on to connecting our handpiece. As you can tell, I'm bringing up the cord from the ground. Plug in. At no point do you touch the surrounding area of your table. You can go from the bottom, slide over, grab your pedal, place your pedal on the ground, and around through the back. Support it from the bottom. You have your arrow that comes through to the back of the handpiece and slides right in. Just a little finger pressure. Once that is complete, your handpiece is put together, remove your gloves. Now your unit is ready to be touched with sterile gloves. Our sterile gloves are on. Now we will test the unit. Make sure function-wise we are good. Before turning on the unit, open your water line by releasing the clip. Now your water line is open. Come around the back side, power on. The unit is ready to go. At no point do you touch the handpiece. Test your pedal. At this point we're gonna run our water line. And purge our water. We have water. We're good to go. 
Here we have our surgical drill set for our implants. Make sure that this is not open until the patient is in your chair and ready for procedure. If our patient is in the chair waiting for procedure, I'm going to open up our sterile packet. Open at times during the process of sterilization, so you want to make sure no bits are rolling out. You may pick up from your packaging and set on the sterile. You may proceed by opening up your setup and aligning all your bits. Your torque wrench may at times miss a ratchet. The best place for this to be found is underneath. Go back in, get ratchet, place back in, you're good to go. Make sure that all your bits are aligned in the proper slots. Your doctor goes in order from smallest to largest diameter, short length to long length. When checking on the proper sizing, you will also find writing on the neck of the bit. This one here is a 3.5. Here is at a eight millimeter length. This bit here is at a eight millimeter length. You see confirming that this is a 10 millimeter and so on. Correct size is 13. Another way to determine the proper length is a side profile view. As long as everything aligns, you know that you're properly sized in. Always double check on the neck and sizing. Once the doctor is completed by drilling in the size and length, you may ask for a tapper. Tapping of the site, as you can see, there's different grooves here in comparison to the left bit here. This allows the implant to go in with no force. Once the tapping is done, your doctor will ask for your driver, which looks like so, a little plug that will be inserted into the implant itself. Always make sure that every bit that is being utilized goes back into its proper placement. All right, so here we're breaking down our implant kit. Just finished the implant. So step by step, we're gonna start off by removing everything off of our handpiece unit here. Slide this off, snap the attachment off. Always make sure that the water attachment stays attached to our handpiece. Place it to the side, come around, place it. Now we're going to go through all our attachments and make sure everything's placed into the box as normal. So here's our extender implant placement. We're going to move into our drivers. Make sure that the numbers on here, as this is an 11.5, goes back into our section of 11.5. Can you move close to the camera? Or you have gloves on, so just bring it up to the camera see the camera so uh, focus on it oh. you see the number so here you can see the numbering uh, okay as in 11.5 we're gonna place it back into the proper location 
11.5. This is a 4.3 by 11 and a half, 11.5. And it goes back into the section. Yo, everything's color coded. Three and a half, which is a 3.5, purple. 4.3, yellow. 5.0, blue. 6.0 is green. We don't use 6.0. Our tapping unit for a 4.3 implant, as you can tell, a little grooves on it. Back into the tapping section. Indicator. Face it back. Driver extender. Additional extender. This is for your conical. So conical and trilobe are the two different implant systems that we use. So depending on the insert, conical, trilobe. Our starting point drill. Torque wrench. This all goes back in one piece. After you've made sure that everything's back into its place, you want to go ahead and make sure that the drivers that you used are clear of any debris before leaving the surgical sites. So we're going to take our irrigating syringe here, slide it through gently, and we're going to push some water through it. This helps eliminate any debris that's been stuck inside as the doctor's drilling process. See, now that it squirts out, it means there's no debris. Face it back, move on to the second one that we've utilized. Once again, little hole. This is a blunt needle. Insert, push through, and slide back just about a quarter. Then you can apply some pressure. We now drop our instruments into the sink under running water. Note, utility gloves are being worn through the process. Next step is spray your tray, cavicide. Place your tray on the opposite side of your instruments. Now we're gonna reach over for our brush, add some soap, disinfecting soap. Run it under water, and we start the scrubbing process. Make sure you always handle two to three and no more at a time. Flip over, make sure both sides are scrubbed and rinsed. Grab your second batch. Your scissors should always be open when scrubbing. Hemostats should always be open when scrubbing as well, as the diamond grit should be clear of any debris. Rangeur should always be Scrub thoroughly, making sure that the dips inside are cleaned out correctly. Make sure to always check for any leftover debris. If any debris is left behind, utilize one of the instruments in the sink. Any dry blood can be removed by a light scrub.
Once all instruments are scrubbed, you may go ahead and place them into the ultrasonic. Not so many at a time. Two, two to three. And this concludes the video. Make sure your lid is always down and press the start button. And now you may remove your utility gloves and thank you. Start off by placing utility gloves on, flip the lid, run your water, remove basket. Just make sure to rinse off your instruments thoroughly while in the basket. Move over to dry towel. Place your basket back in the ultrasonic. Pat dry your instruments. Transfer instruments to blue wrap, piece by piece. It's okay to have instruments in a pile. You will reorganize as you place them onto your CRSR wrap. At this point, you can start to reorganize your instruments in the order that you will start to set up once reopened. As you can see, syringes will start first along with your Minnesota, your mirrors, your retractors. Continued on by your curettes. Slide everything over. This way it is easier to roll your burrito or your surgical wrap. Now that everything's in place, you're going to take two wraps, fold over, grab the other two from the top end. As you can see, I am removing one that we will use as an outer wrap. Now you may start the process of rolling over. Make sure it's nice and tight. Bring in at a diagonal form. Gonna roll over once, twice. Now go to the left side, bring over your flap, right side flap over, bring it nice and tight. Place your sterilizing tape. Remove utility gloves. Make sure you always have a Sharpie available. You would need this as marking. Place the amount of instruments in the package. The color coding of instruments. Name of staff member who sterilized. And your date. This concludes our video of proper sterilization and wrapping of a surgical tray. Now,